Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to focus on piano accompaniment and in a rather stepwise manner. I'm going to take what you heard was very familiar, right? It sounds like every other John Mayer or Ed Sheeran kind of song. It is a little bit of swing and it's something you would expect a guitar player to play you know, at the word go, it's like a very traditional guitar pattern. So my approach to piano accompaniment has always been, you know, what does the guitar player do and then try to follow the guitar player or somehow survive on the piano. And then uh, strangely enough, at at some points, I would enjoy doing it without the guitar player in, in some concerts where, you know, it's just me on the piano. And that offers another challenge because then I have to emulate what that person is doing on the keys and also do what the piano player should also do which is focus on the bass little bit of melody line maybe take a solo but don't lose the chords so it comes foundationally from a guitar uh, environment but i think it'll work for the piano and we'll go in a stepwise manner so do consider getting the handwritten notes and the staff notation on our patreon page you could download it and study it as we are going through uh, and also keep your keyboards out or your digital pianos out you can practice along with me probably pausing the lesson in here and there or rewinding as you feel like so let's just start off with a simple chord progression we are in the key of d major and the chords would be d major b minor g major d major d major b minor g major d major We'll just keep that going. Uh, yeah, D major has two sharps, right? F sharp and C sharp. So we are essentially doing the 1, the 6, the 4, and back to 1. And then for variety, the 5, the 6, the 4, and 1. So what changed in the second line is the 1 became the 5, right? D, B minor, G major, D major, A major, B minor, G major, D major. And I'm playing this with the most efficient inversion. The whole idea is to not invade the vocal territory. The vocal territory will be the upper registers. Or if the piano goes to the upper register, then it would distract from what the vocalist is doing. So we try our best to play in, in and around. The, the general rule I have for students and myself as well is if you're accompanying try to play in and around middle c or i would say middle c sharp that's a better viewpoint for me middle c is a bit tough to see but i can definitely see middle c sharp so so you're on the key of d major i've given you the chords and let's incrementally get started let's start with an accompaniment pattern which you'll probably already know and we'll do this with a few ra songs which just keep coming into mind i think this chord progression will work on the song waiting on the world to change by john mayer in fact it's literally from that song most of it at least and before we get started it'll be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications let's get cracking so first let's study the duration of these chords it's not going to be one one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. So that's your standard ballad accompaniment where the chord takes up an entire bar. I've done a few other accompaniment tutorials. I'll leave them in the description. You could check it out if you haven't watched them. But for this, the challenge is the chords are changing every two beats. So one, two, change four. One, two, change four. Okay, that's D, B minor, G major. D major. So you have to be very good with your inversions. And the default way of playing chords would be to play the chord roots in your left hand. D, B, G, D. A, B, G, D. And in the right hand, you can play in the most efficient way, sticking in and around this C, C sharp, D sharp kind of range. So here we go. I'm choosing the second inversion because if I play high, it's leaving my bass, right? So... D major, second inversion, B minor. So where you start is very important. It's also making it easy for me to play. If I start with the second. So D major, be a bit careful because you don't want to play A in the left hand. That's D major slash A. That's not D major. So D major, B minor, G major, D major, A major, B minor. G major, D major. So we'll play everything as a minimum. One, two, three, four, 
chord 2 3 4 so let's do that with some melody waiting waiting on the world to change oh waiting oh waiting waiting on the world to change 2 4 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and 2 okay now to make it a bit more interesting what we can do in the right hand is that second hit of the chord or the second chord every alternate chord instead of it being played 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and the alternate chord or the second chord would not be played at the on of 3 instead we play it at the and of the 2 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and so that add some rhythmic flavor you already have a, a kind of a rhythm groove intact right one and two waiting on the world to change oh waiting oh but 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 i've got a fast car but tonight and no 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 it works for a lot of songs of songs as you know so probably hundreds i guess so the whole trick is don't do 1 2 3 4 1 2 this sounds more like an like a marching process so try and do it at the end every alternate so every alternate chord will be at the end 1 and 2 and just to make it a bit more groovy what i like to do is snap that can offer another challenge 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 basically 2 and 4 or at least the 4 feel the 2 and snap the 4 or else snap both that will be pretty interesting check this out 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and in fact you do this at a gig you can hold down the chord with your pedal and snap and you have percussion also going on for you 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and snap maybe snap with the 2 and the 4 1 the tricky but no we came on waiting to waiting on the world to change oh waiting oh waiting on the world to change and you'll also observe a lot of this music especially when the chord changes happen at this end we don't we don't keep it very um very straight all the time there could be one or two songs that oh my sleep but it's more laid back i think the laid back approach would work better so it's not it's more it's more a little bit of a swing feel i would imagine right so where where in go where in the world to change oh where in the world to change okay so you may, might want to also develop that swing um now what more can the left hand do the right hand's already doing its thing um maybe you can add an extra little ghost note here check this out four and one remember the snap now the snap is kind of on the piano one and two
this a bit busy and a bit more energetic, what you could do is look at the beat division system between the two chords. It's one and two and three and four. And if you divide it into eight eighth notes, the two chords would be placed or have not a regular amount of time. It's not four there and four eighth notes there. It's one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So you could kind of get that vibe also into your head. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Okay. Now you can bring that out on the piano with simple block chords. Now it becomes a very piano pattern. No, no, So you could have two patterns. One is the laid back. And then the staccato. Keep a steady eighth note with some accents versus with the clap at the two and the four one and two and three and four and one So we are already getting by, I think, in the right hand. What you can do to make it a lot more human would be to slide from one note of the scale to a target note of the chord. The usual target note of the chord could be the third. So if I play D major like this, a good strategy would be... Now if you cannot get the, the quick flick, which is like a hammer-on for a guitar player, that's what they do when they play this technique. So... can't get the quick flick what you can do eventually you're going to land on the D major chord but via the E which is gliding you don't want to do a glide via that's more bluesy you're trying to stay more on the diatonic uh, domain so Just kind of glide it, glue it together. You should always feel like there's a drummer with you while you're playing. Because then if you're accompanying a singer, the singer is going to have a lot more confidence because you already have the band in your head, so to speak. You know, So the singer is never going to lose... You will the, uh, rather the singer will trust you as the accompanist a lot more or if you are accompanying your own self and when you have this drum like approach you can focus more on your singing and how you would like to you know you know entertain the audience as well which is very important for a vocalist so uh, let's bring that uh, slide again so I like that for B minor or you can even do or You know, a variety of things or basically you're, you're sliding to a chord tone but not making it too weird don't want that but keep diatonic so you can do you can do that um, so but you're kind of getting the same melody thing going right so what I would then do is I like that. It's quite nice. So you can now actually give up inversions for the for the benefit of the melody to shine through or what you're playing to shine through on the piano. So
I can even do like a like two notes to glide, you know. I can even do a chromatic here and there, but not too often. This is a country song. If it's blues, yes. Or gospel, you can do that chromatic slide, but generally this works. One more time with the gliding. And you can even do that 2 and 4 snap with your piano. Or not all the time, maybe. also like to do is to get the essence of the drum kit which is already running in your mind so the thing at least that's the kit in my head right now i don't know what's the kit in the uh, original song but let's go with this so so all those drum hits which you're not playing predominantly in the right hand you could consider doing with these elements so with with these remaining fingers so so instead of doing that's nice but and nothing there so So you observe when I do that, my pinky is respecting or holding on to the roots of the chord. I'm not leaving the pinky. I'm doing my groove with my other fingers. So why should the pinky lift? Then it'll sound very counterproductive. So this is going on. So and now I add the groove. The other thing you can do, depending on the vocal line, is you can add a few filler elements in between the chords. Maybe just that little A with the pinky. And then maybe A. I like doing this a lot. When you go from the 5 to the 6 minor, these are some 6th intervals. And maybe repeat. That's the plagal cadence, G to D. Or, so there's a little slide. And then the top, and then back to D. So you could look at it as a, as a cadence, which is two chords. So what are you going to do in between D major and B minor? Or are you not going to do anything? Which is also fine. So I would just pinpoint that movement. D major, B minor. What what can I think of? Maybe Like that. Some close thirds there. At that top A. And that's too bluesy, so don't want that. And then maybe a G to D. Or uh, can add like an extra note. Uh, maybe that uh, close thirds, or maybe some octaves, and then um, sixth intervals. I like that line. So you can even take that and template it across the whole progression. New inversions.
with some ghosts bringing some of the drums I think so never lose the drums in a nutshell if you play without a the, the ghost drummer inside you also playing or jamming with you that's uh, it, you're not going to get the exact vibe because you may not know if the song is swinging you may not know if it's a very straightish song so it's this is a technique or an accompaniment method like all of my accompaniment lessons which are not song dependent per se yes we 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 were inspired by the john mayer classic waiting on the world to change but you can use this for so many songs so do check out some of our other accompaniment lessons and if you have an accompaniment style that you'd like me to explore in a detailed youtube video like this kindly leave it in the comments also let us know what you thought about this one and i hope you can use this approach to work with a lot of other musicians and probably use it in your recordings if you're a producer and see you also see which songs that you might have heard of works off the top any of these guitar singer songwriter songs i think this is like a default rhythm there are there are a few other standard guitar rhythms what i call as campfire rhythms which you find at any campfire party so to speak so this is one of them i think ed sheeran will use this few coldplay songs definitely john mayer i think at least five john mayer songs will have this kind of a groove i feel okay um you right guys so we did a simple chord progression but with a fairly incremental stepwise accompaniment pattern where the groove came in where some fillers came in but at the end of the day the essence is the downbeat and then the downbeat of the first chord and the offbeat of the second chord so one and two and three so it kind of creates that syncopation automatically that irregular or that irregularity between the timing of the chords you know one chord is a three quavers while the second chord is five quavers right so hope you found the lesson useful the notation and my handwritten notes are waiting for you on our patreon do consider giving that a download and you will get access to not only this lesson's uh, supplementary notes you'll get stuff from all the lessons we've been putting out on our youtube channel thanks a ton and do consider sharing the video liking the video leave us a comment with what you thought and i will catch you in the next one cheers